Pleasure to welcome J.J. Redick into the show. J.J., I was on social media early Sunday, then didn't get back on. I need resolution to this question. Did you make the dunk shot? Did you make the dunk shot, J.J.? <laughs> I, I did make the dunk shot. And to be clear about something, I realized that it's not called a dunk shot. I got a lot of flack for that uh -huh. on social media. I had a teammate at Duke who told me my very first week as a freshman, he said, the key to a good dunk shot <laughs> is concentration plus control. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. Who, who told you that, JJ? Uh, it was a guy named Nick Horvath who uh, went and played overseas in New Zealand. Yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah, that was back in the old Maryland Duke ACC days. Of course, I know Nick Horvath. Um, yeah. And I'm glad you made the dunk shot. Um, the, the circumstances of the moment, JJ, given COVID 19, given the social unrest which follow a number of incidences around the country, and the opportunity for the NBA to come back as a group with a stage, not to themselves entirely, but largely to themselves. As you talk to your teammates, what's the sense of what that will look like in terms of advancing the message and the cause? We're trying to figure out uh, with the Players Association and with the NBA about um, putting forth real action. Obviously, it's been reported we're going to put Black Lives Matter on the court. There might be an option where we can wear messages on the back of our jersey other than our last name. But we all realize uh, there's more to it than just kneeling, uh, you know, at the anthem or uh, putting up the black power sign. Like, we need real change in this country. We need actionable change. And we're working with the league and the Players Association right now in figuring out what that looks like and how we can invest uh, in black communities. You've been in the league for quite some time, and you, you've, I mean, we, unfortunately, this is an episode that, that's been repeated throughout time. But I've, I've noticed that it feels different in many respects. You had Malcolm Brogdon on your podcast who went down to Atlanta and marched with uh, the folks in that city. As you've listened to, to your, your peers, what's, what's resonated most with you about this time right now, J.J.? It brings me back to going through the Donald Sterling saga with the Clippers back in 2014. What resonated then and, and what resonates now is how personal it is. It's so personal for my friends, my teammates, my coaches, uh, their family members. I think for you know a lot of people, it isn't personal because they can't relate. And, and that's where I've been very blessed because of basketball, that I've been exposed to the world. I've been exposed to a number of people. Um, and, I, and I feel fortunate for that. But I, I think what's resonated the most is just, just how deeply personal this is and the range of emotion. Scott, the rage and the anger is real and it's valid and it's warranted. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I say that not to say I condone some of the rioting that happened, but we're talking about centuries of abuse, centuries of mistreating black people in this country. The rage is warranted. The anger is valid. I was so impressed by your former coach, Mike Krzyzewski, who on Twitter talked about his days at Army, and I'm paraphrasing, but it was about the hard right compared to the easy wrong. I don't know if that's a message that he had ever shared with you in your time there, but that really, that really resonated with me about just the idea of doing what's right might be difficult, but the doing yeah. what's wrong because it's easy is bull and it's just been too easy <laughs> to do what's easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, yeah. I, I don't know if that's something that he had ever shared with you. Well, sure. I mean, he, he said that before to us. I got to witness Coach on a daily basis hold himself to this standard that was unbelievable. It, it set the tone for the rest of my life. It set the tone for the rest of my NBA career, uh, watching him every day. Four years with that guy, I never saw him have a bad day. To his point and to your point, we all recognize that this change is not going to happen overnight. There have been people fighting for this change for centuries, for decades. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, but, but we have to figure out uh, hard solutions to these very hard problems. And it's an impossible pivot from the gravity of what we're talking about to basketball. But then there's the reality, JJ, of going into a bubble and what that looks like, what the reality of that is. And I get how yeah. difficult it would be.
to do that? As you talk to your peers about what that looks like, what, what kind of, I'm just curious, what kind of opinions get kicked around about doing it? Yeah, I, there's a bunch of different uh, nuances to this idea of going to a bubble. First of all, for the guys that have family, uh, you're essentially going to be away from your family for 50 to 60 days. It's a lot, man. Uh, with no contact. I have two young kids, a, a six-year-old boy and a four-year-old boy. I'm married. Uh, just celebrated my 10-year wedding anniversary this past week, actually. Right so there's that component. There's a legit component of being scared about uh, COVID. And that's something that's been reiterated to me a, a number of times from my teammates. Um, and then there's the, the, the notion of... Uh, are, are we going to take away from this social justice movement that's happening right now by playing? Is, is us playing a distraction? I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer to that question. Um, I, I completely understand the guys that, that don't want to play, whether it's for family, whether it's for health, or whether it's for the social justice movement. I know we've seen a lot of uh, WNBA players who have decided to sit out the season because they want to continue the cause. I, I literally applaud them. I, I mean, Seriously, the, the amount of courage it takes to do that uh, is, is commendable. And I, I get everybody's thing. And I think everybody kind of has to make a decision for themselves. Um, for the, I believe for the betterment of our league, we need to play. And we also have an opportunity with the platform that we will have in Orlando to hopefully enact some real policy change. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.